because my dad was so involved in the church, I realized rather quickly that this, in fact, drew him away from the family and mm. things were just not good at home. Um, so basically during that time, I just started to create this ideology about how I was able to be self-sufficient. I created an ideology that I did not have the need for the Lord. And of course, this led to a process of self-dependence. This led to a process of me turning away from the Lord. I, that was also, that was just one of the things I saw. And in my head, I just, I never could understand how we claimed this God and we're not living like him. And I was just like, I don't want any parts of this religion. I don't want any parts of this religion. Like I literally could, just do this for myself. Well, welcome to the Heart to Heart podcast. Um, I'm excited to have Shinanye Agu join us today. Um, Shinanye brings a powerful testimony. Um, she is Nigerian and moved to the United States in 2009. Shinanye is an author and a spoken word minister. She was raised in a Christian household um, as the daughter of a pastor, but wanted nothing to do with God. Shinani's faith was tested by the challenges within her own family. Uh, from experiencing abuse to battling depression and self-harm, her journey through high school was marked by pain and confusion. As she entered college, Shinani sought solace um, in bad relationships and unhealthy coping mechanisms, leading her further um, from her faith. Yet, in the midst of her darkest moments, Shinanian encountered the relentless love of God who pursued her with dreams, visions, and divine appointments. Through a gradual process of healing and restoration, Shinanian discovered the depth of God's grace and the power of true friendship with him. Well, join us as Shinanya shares her powerful testimony of overcoming adversity and finding hope in the midst of despair. Shinanye, I want to welcome you to our podcast. How are you? I'm good. I am doing very well. Thank you so much for having me. Super honored to be here. Thank you so much for this amazing platform that you've created. Um, yeah, thank you. We are, like I said, I am thrilled. I'm excited to have you here because we have been texting, we have been, you know, communicating, and we set up a day, you know, yes. for you to come on the podcast and share your your powerful, powerful story, you know, um, you know, just your journey, you know, um, how you grew up in a Christian home, but you didn't have, you didn't want anything to do with God. <laughs> Let's just start right there, right? So, um, you know, I, I'm going to stop right here because I want to open it up. You know, I want to open up the floor so you can share this amazing, amazing testimony that I really believe is going to bless somebody today. So, yes, like she said, I am Chinanye and I was raised and born in a Christian home. My dad is, in fact, a pastor. And I remember at that time, I had a lot of zeal um, for the things of God. However, I realized rather, I realized later on in my in my um, adult years that they were not actually zeal for God. They were just zeal for activities, right? So I did a lot wow. of activities without knowing God. So I was mm. that kid who was always in the kids' choir, um, drama department, you know, just always doing things in church. However, um, I never really knew God, the God behind mm. it. And I think another thing for me that I saw in the Christian home was because my dad was so involved in the church, I realized rather quickly that this, in fact, drew him away from the family and mm. things were just not good at home. So, of course, my dad and my mom, um, they had numerous challenges and ultimately they decided to divorce. And I remember um, the, during the process, um, before they separated, 
I would see things take place and I would literally tell myself, I don't want a part of this been of this life. Like I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want any parts of God. And I just never really I never really liked God. <laughs> um that sounds terrible to say, but I never really liked God and it was just, it, it's been a lot that really took place in between those times that really just drew me away from the presence of God. It drew me away from one intimacy with God. And I remember even at some point, uh, it's funny because now I do spoken word for the Lord, mm-hmm. but my journey to learning poetry was because I was writing against the things of God, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't want anything to do with God. However, I was forced um, to go to church. So during those times, I would literally p- pick out my phone and, and pen and paper and just write things um, against God, you know, try to like learn poetry from learn poetry from those manners, right? So try to find rhymes. Um, that was how I was first introduced into poetry in general. Um, but but like I said, um, back in those days, I just, I just, I really just did not want the Lord. And then once my parents divorced, um, I lived with my dad. And because my dad was so busy, like any African man, mm-hmm. um, like any African man, um, I basically, and I say this a lot, I basically felt like I was left to raise myself. So I grew up very independently. Um, my uncle was there, but. Even with that, there was a, numerous things that took place. Abuse took place in that in that process that I didn't tell anybody about because again, I was just I was young and yeah. I knew my mom. Like I didn't know how to tell my mom, so it was just it, I just did not tell anybody. Um, so I felt like I just was left to really just raise myself. Um, so basically during that time, I just started to create this ideology about how I was able to be self-sufficient. I created an ideology that I did not have the need for the Lord. And of course, this led to a process of self-dependence. This led to a process of me turning away from the Lord. And um, eventually, uh, my my mom and I and my siblings we migrated to the United States, and during that process, that was also a traumatic time for the family because there were also numerous challenges that occurred within that time. Um, and my 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 siblings and I we had to endure um, a couple of things, and basically during that time, I also started to even grow more of a dislike for the Lord, right? Because mm. what happened was at that time, I also started to see because at that time, um, my mom's husband at the time. Um, that was just very, it was a, it was, it was toxic at the time. Right. And what happened was I started to see people in leadership at church who lived a life that was so contrary to the things of God. And because of that, I, I literally just did not want anything to do with the Lord. I was just like, I don't want any parts in this. (laughs) Um, I don't want any parts in this. I just wanted to be myself. However, um, the thing about it is, I and I do believe this, that there's always a yearning that is a void on the inside of every man that yearns for God. And no matter how much we can try, we can never fill that void on our own. So what ended up happening was I started trying to fill this void on my own and started to try to find fulfillment in the wrong places. Now, I'm normally like a pretty exuberant person. However, what happened was because I didn't have a place of safety where I could where I could cry or where I, I, where I could on veil these things i started to try to find safety in other things so this is where depression started to set in and i turned to self-harm i turned to self-harm because everything else i tried before that like with food didn't work friendship didn't work and it just all led to dead end so i I turned to self-harm because i just did not know how to process the fact i was feeling such an internal pain but there was just nowhere for me to to put it on. So I felt mm-hmm. like if I could carry the the weight of this pain, then I would feel better. But of course, <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't feel better. <laughs> I didn't feel better. And even like after like trying to know the Lord, I realized um, when I first came to the Lord um, in 2010, my first thing was I was trying to come to the Lord because I was scared of hell. Mm. And because I was scared of hell, um, I heard this gospel and it's like, you know, come get saved and, you know, you would not go to hell. It's like, okay, well, the worst thing I wanted was to suffer in earth and of course, and then go to hell. So I remember thinking to myself, I was like, I just didn't, I didn't want any parts of hell. So that's when I first got saved. However, 
I, what I soon quickly realized was the fear of hell was not enough to sustain my salvation. Mm -hmm. Because when things started to happen that were contrary to what I felt like the Lord should be providing to me, I started to grow again a huge dislike for the Lord. And I remember mm -hmm. back then in my <laughs> crazy years, um, I even went on Facebook and I started cursing God out. Now, again, super crazy. I do not know. The Lord is merciful. <laughs> the Lord is so merciful. But I remember starting to curse God out. And I remember I became agnostic. And I told myself God was not real. I just did not believe the Lord was real. I was like, the Lord is not real. I believe there is a God, but I just don't believe it's Jesus Christ. And I just started to really believe this, right? Mm -hmm. I started to really believe these things. And I remember just thinking to myself, like, I'm able, I'll be fine on my own, right? Now, again, I was still forced to go to church. But I think another thing about it is was, I mean, the church, the, the church of Jesus Christ, of course, is imperfect. We love the church. But right. what I do believe was the church also simply saw the external behavior um, and they started trying to reprimand my external behaviors um, without really trying to dig deeper into like how I was really like, you know, doing then. So if anything, this made me not want anything to do with church even more. So again, going into college, I started to try to find things to really fill this void, right? So from sorority to trying to party. But one thing I would say is this, the Lord pursued me. Mm. The Lord indeed pursued me. Every single time I would try to run into something, the Lord will indeed provide a way out. Um, that, this reminds me of the scripture where it talks about there is no temptation that's over, that is not coming to men, but God will provide a way of escape. And one thing I can truly say is the Lord provided a way of escape. Now, did I choose to take the way of escape? No, not all the time, but the Lord truly did provide a way of escape. So even when I was, I started like trying to run to alcohol, pretty soon the mm -hmm. Lord started to show me like this, this is not going to work. The Lord placed people in my life. And there was even a time in college when I had told myself I was done with God and I wanted to get into um sexual morality mm. and i remember um there was this guy I was i was you know i was just ready to get into sexual morality and that was my goal and all of a sudden like the um the person i was with started quoting scripture and he wasn't he wasn't mature to living for god so i knew he was just being used by the lord at that time and literally like i started bawling in tears because i was like god why are you why are you like what are you doing it just felt like the lord was in my face like what are you, like why are you running from me so mm -hmm. one thing i can truly say is the lord pursued me and one thing the lord allowed me just to see was because when i finally gave my life to the, to christ it wasn't like a huge supernatural experience i was not struck by lightning shout out to paul <laughs> shout out to paul i did not go blind um but literally i remember just i'm um, staying there in a church service and mm. surprisingly by poetry um the, the pastor preached the whole time i tuned out but when he said he had a poetry, I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm listening. I love this. And it, it was talking about this girl who had no friends, and she realized that Jesus was a friend. And mm. literally, I was just like, God, I want you to be a friend. I've never heard that God was a friend to me before. And I just like, God, I want you to be a friend. And literally, that's what I can say. I literally just decided to accept God as a friend. And what I realized was every single thing I was searching for was found in Christ. So for so long, I was trying to find friendships outside of God. I was trying mm -hmm. to find um, fulfillment outside of God. I was trying to find things to make me feel better. I was trying to find a, a place to vent out how I felt. And what I realized was God was the place the whole time. And it, it's been so many things. Like I, there was one time I remember um, I was going through something at home. It was, you know, again, those period was super traumatic for me and i was going through that at home and i remember i was just bawling out in tears and mm. i remember like praying and like i was trying i was crying <laughs> i was crying praying and literally i had a vision and in the vision i saw god crying and of course it made me <laughs> it made me stop because i was like why are you crying and the lord just allowed me to see like for one like you are my daughter. So when you're hurting, I hurt too. And knowing that about God allowed me to trust him more. And mm. that allowed me to understand the heart of the father compared to what I've seen, right? So compared to um the way I felt like the Lord was displayed, it allowed me to go to him. So even like the abuse, I felt like I went through knowing that, okay, God, where were you? Um, Or when I was in church and I felt like God did not show up for me, oh God, why did you allow this to come into my family? The Lord just allowed me to see his heart throughout the whole thing. That's 
I mean, my testimony is just really the fact that the Lord has been a friend, right? The Lord has been a friend. The Lord allowed me to, the Lord rescued me from myself. Um, the Lord rescued me from myself. Literally, there have been times when I, I planned my own suicide. And I, mm. I remember one time I was like really suicidal. And I somebody came to me and gave me a prophecy. Like, oh, you're, um, you're thinking of suicide. And I'm like, why are you in my business? <laughs> like, why are you in my business? And it, again, it's the mercies of the Lord, right? Um, oh yeah, like I was self-harming and I told my best friend and she went to go report me <laughs> to my, um, to the school. And like, of course I was forced to see a therapist that I hated mm -hmm. doing, but again, it's the mercies of the Lord because the Lord knew, um, left to me, I would have destroyed myself. And I'll say this before, um, I'll say this. Cause one thing that the Lord allowed me to see was even after, um, I came back to the Lord, um, the Lord allowed me to see that. He's indeed able to make all things new. He's able to make all things work together for my good. So here's somebody yeah. who did not know the Lord. And literally the scars on my arms disappeared <laughs> after I got saved. Like, so it, it's it's been a it's been a crazy journey knowing God. But one thing I can say about God is the fact that the Lord is been a a God who restored me and who was also a friend to me when I felt like I had nobody. Um, I know my testimony is kind of all over the place, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, here's a girl who did not want to know anything about God. Here's a girl who ran from the Lord, um, who the Lord kept pursuing. And every time the Lord pursued me, I feel like I ran into a, um, I ran into a roadblock. I ran into a roadblock that I had nowhere to go, but God. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> That's my <Woo>! testimony. <laughs> you know what? I, you know, I tell you what, you remind me of the, the love of God, undescribable yeah. love of God. Like you, we can't, we, you know, we can't comprehend it. Right. Yeah. Even when, we, even when we faithless, he is faithful. Yes. Um, and you really remind me of the, you know, the amazing love of God. But one of the things that I kind of want you, I want to kind of go back a little bit and I, I'll, I'll let you expand on that a little bit. You know, you talked about that um, some of the things that you saw in the leadership in the church kind of drew you further, you know, even further from, from the Lord. Can you expand on that? What are some of those things that you saw in the leadership in the church? Yeah, for sure. And I really hope this doesn't come off like I'm bashing the church because again, like we love the body of Christ. This is the bride of Christ that Jesus died for. Um, so for me, one of the things I can say is, of course, my dad's a pastor and things at home were just not the best. Um, it was filled with a lot of a lot of ungodly things, right? So, um, so for me, that was some things I experienced firsthand. And then at the time, um, my mom's husband, um, before um, they had separated. He was also an elder in the church. So I was able to see like, it just felt like living a double life. And at that time, I was trying to run from the Lord. And it just felt like, again, the leadership of the church were, were more focused on external things rather than mm -hmm. internal things, right? And like, I'm somebody who is very vocal. So um, I remember I used to love dressing modestly because I, I wasn't saved. So modesty was not in my vocabulary. And I remember, um, you know, I would get called out for dressing modestly. And I was like, well, weren't you on this on Instagram yesterday? And of course, they didn't like me. So it just felt like, again, just double standard, double lives. And mm -hmm. I, that was also, that was just one of the things I saw. And in my head, I just, I never could understand how we claim this God and we're not living like him. And I was just like, I don't want any parts of this religion. I don't want any parts of this religion. Like, I literally could just do this for myself so wow wow that's wow thank you for sharing that um you know you talked about that pivotal moment when you know you stood at church and the pastor was you know was reading poetry and and you know that was the moment kind of like that it was kind of like a wake-up call right wait a yeah. minute you know god is because god has been pursuing you throughout all your life but that moment was your you know your pivotal moment the moment that you went like wow you know i, I gotta do something about my lifestyle here right yeah. but from that moment to now how would you describe your personal relationship with jesus 
Cool. That's I know you've grown, right? I know you've grown over yeah, time. True. You know, faith, you know, faith, we, we, we just don't move with the same level of faith. Yeah. Faith grows. Yeah. So talk to me about your relationship with, with Jesus now. Whew. Okay. I, wow. That's good. That's a good question. My relationship mm. with God now, um, it has been a journey. It has been a mm. journey. But one thing I can truly say is I'm so glad that God has been indeed been a friend to me. Um, mm. So for me, my friendship with God is something I always say this. I'm like, God is literally like a real friend, <laughs> you know, like the same way, you know, you get upset with God, you know, with your friends and you talk things out and you're like, I don't want to talk to you for like a day or two. Then you're like, oh God, but where am I going to go? Um, I feel like I have those moments with God. I remember even vividly in 2022, I was going through a really hard time when I was trusting God for something specific. And it felt like, the well, it was a test of faith for sure, but it felt mm-hmm. like the Lord was letting me down at that time. And I remember I told myself, I was like, God, I'm not talking to you for a day. Like, I'm not talking to you anymore. And literally after two days, I was like, God, I miss you. Like, let's talk. Like, <laughs> let's talk. So my relationship with God now, how would I describe it? I would describe my relationship with God now as one of just being positioned as a daughter. I think my relationship with God has gone through a lot of different dynamics, right? So even with me hating the church to now operating in ministry, <laughs> it, it, it's really a weird dynamic, but one thing I'm understanding about the Lord is the Lord is just looking for me to position as, as a daughter. Everything I'm doing, flowing from a place of intimacy, flowing from mm. a place of knowing him. So really now it's just really just about resting in God. Like that's that's really my relationship with the Lord, resting in God, believing that he is. Um, And I think um beforehand, when I first even asking God to be a friend, I remember thinking so deep about it. Like, okay, God, so what do I do now? Like, I don't want to be like this. And God was just telling me like, just rest. Like, and even when I felt like the Lord was leading me into like ministry work and God first started telling me about my calling, I, I tried to run from it because I was like, God, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Right. And God literally had to tell me, like, no, just be you in me, like be yeah. yourself in me. So if you enjoy our content, be sure to like, share and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest releases. Turn on the notification bell. Have a story to tell. We'd love to hear it. Reach out to us at CindyBingham.com or connect with us on Instagram. Now back to the show. Literally, my relationship with God is just literally just being a place of from toiling to resting, right? From slavery to sonship. And I, a lot of times what happens is um, we operate in unintentionally unintentional slavery, right? Because my in our God. minds, we are still bound from even experiences of our past and experiences that we have rehearsed and even things that we may have believed about God that we don't know we believe, right? And I've had to renew my mind, right? So through my relationship with God, I feel like a lot of things in my life has literally changed just by me being positioned as a daughter. So even the little things like that we may not even think about, like, okay, what does it mean to be feminine, right? Like I said, I feel like I had to raise myself. I didn't grow up, you know, learning to like be calm or learning to like maintain a, you know, a, a quiet spirit. I didn't grow up like that. <laughs> like I grew up feeling like I had to defend myself, right? I so mm-hmm. for me, resting in God taught me like, no, let me be your defender, right? Let mm-hmm. me be the one who fights for you. So resting in God has literally changed my whole personality. It has changed my whole persona. So my relationship with God is literally one of sonship that's still continuing, right? The Lord is literally have to transform me, even with friendships, right? Because at that time I ran to friendship as a place of escape, and I remember. There was one time in college, the Lord had to sit me down. I was like, let me teach you how to be a friend. And the Lord took me back to the journey of David and Jonathan. And I was like, okay, God, cool. Like, let me learn how to be a friend. Let me teach you how to be a daughter. Let me teach you forgiveness. Like, so literally my relationship with God has literally just been one of, being positioned as a daughter, right? Being positioned yeah. as a daughter, but also learning as you mature from a, as you mature as a daughter. And you, you say you have some kids, so you understand the more your kids mature, the more you're able to bring them into as kind of like a friend, but not really like, they're not yeah. your friend, friend, but like you're able to mm-hmm. bring them into like deeper things as friends, right? So learning that, okay, I am a daughter of God, but I'm also a friend of God. So I have to just stay in position. So Right, you guys, it's been quite a transformation. It's still transforming. It's still transforming, yes, but yes. it's definitely been quite a journey. Oh, gosh, I love that. I, I, I love that analogy, you know, like, I mean, that that is true. Resting, resting on God. Like, I feel like sometimes we, 
you know, we, we try to do things on our own. Like, you know, you, you're not realizing that God, you know, we, we are vessels that God is using and, and God is doing the work through us. Yes. But, you know, we trying to use our own strength. We trying to use our own understanding instead of leaning on God's understanding and leaning on, on him totally, right. you know, <clears throat> I love that. And I love the fact that you, you, you talked about positioning yourself as, as God's daughter. You know, I, I just, I, I love that. You know, I, I'm positioning, I, I'm just saying, I'm taking that. I am positioning myself as God's daughter. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, and he's my father, you know, yeah. and that, that friendship relationship that you talked about. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's real because I think a lot of times, like, we go through mm-hmm. seasons in that Christian walk where we feel like the Lord is not answering us and when we feel like, you know, mm-hmm. this Christian life is so routine or when we feel like people are not, you know, people are not responding um, as Christians and it gets us frustrated. Like, so things do happen in that Christian life. And I think sometimes it makes us want to leave our position, right? Um, mm-hmm. And we just have to literally remember, what do I know about God? Because your revelation of God is what will sustain you when things get hard, right? So we have to know God as like, if I know God as the I am God, like what do I need God to be for me in this season? And when I know God as that, I can rest in that position, right? So because I know God as a provider when things get hard, I don't look to other things. I look to God, right? Because I know God as somebody who's, who is a rescuer when I'm encountering a situation, even, even something later, right? So for, for example, there was a time when I was pulled over. <laughs> I was pulled over because I was driving too much. I was driving too, too um, I was driving um, a little too fast, um, a little too it's fast. All right. And I remember at that time, you know, they told me I had reckless driving and I was like, oh my God. Like, I was like, oh, wow, this never happened to me before. And literally, I felt like that was an invitation for God to show me to position myself and actually see him as a God of justice, as a God who's able to rescue me. And yet it seems so small. But that moment forced me to trust the Lord because a situation where I was scared, I was like, oh, my gosh, like I might get a misdemeanor. But God was telling me, rest in me and actually see me come through for you. And that's literally what happened. Right. So I feel like every situation is a time for me to position myself deeper. And when I position myself deeper, I can see God in a different light. Right. So. That's good. There's That's always going to be um, opportunities for for deeper positioning, right? So That's we just good. have to like really be like that tree planted by the rivers. Like, are we going to choose to get our roots deeper? Or are we going to choose to be uprooted when things come through, when things um go off? So, wow, wow, Minister, <laughs> Minister Shinanye, this is good stuff right here. This is I'm I'm receiving it. You know, I'm yeah. receiving all of it. Oh, positioning myself as God's daughter, resting on God, resting on God. We got to remember that. Yeah. Um, Shinani, you went through, you went through a lot, you know, you went through abuse, you went through, um, you know, struggling with accepting God, although, you know, you grew up in the church and, and, you know, seeking acceptance and, you know, looking for purpose, you know, and a sense of to belong somewhere. Yeah. Uh, what words of encouragement would you offer someone who's going through that right now? What would you tell them? I would tell them, I would tell them to simply rest in God. I, I mean, that sounds so simple, but I, I literally would just tell them to simply rest in God. Right. So mm-hmm. I would tell them to release that to the Lord. Right. So pick up, right. his, pick up the Pick up your pick up your cross, right? And mm. really just lay it at the feet of Jesus, right? So mm. I know life happens, things go on, but if you are able to, if you're able, the cross is a place of exchange. If you're able to exchange your burdens for his peace, you will see that there's purpose hidden in that, right? So even for me, I can speak on the fact that like I struggle with purpose, I struggle with identity, and through that, because of that, after me learning my purpose and my identity, I was able to write a book out of it. Never, ever, mm-hmm. ever did I think of writing a book. That was never in my life plans for myself, right? Even poetry, the fact that uh, my journey to spoken word was birthed from a place of me hating the Lord. And now I do that for the Lord is literally from a place of submitting to God. So I would just say, like, uh, 
pick up the cross and embrace mm-hmm. the cross, right? Embrace the cross. Um, ironically, it's Easter. Um, and what we uh-huh. see is the Lord embrace the cross. And because the Lord embraced the cross, we can see victory out of it. So we don't mm-hmm. run from the cross because even for me, for a while, for a long time, abuse was something I ran from. I never wanted to even think about it. Right. But the mm-hmm. Lord had had me embrace that. And now I see that there are people I'm able to reach because I've embraced mm-hmm. that part of my story and submitted yeah. it to the Lord. So when you submit your cross to the Lord, he's able to extract the pain. I mean, of course, the pain still mm-hmm. exists, but God is able to extract purpose from that pain right there is literally purpose in everything that you go through but you have to embrace your cross and submit it to the lord laid at the feet of jesus and rest in that place don't leave the feet of jesus until never never leave the feet of the lord right like don't never leave the feet of the lord rest at the feet of god right and even when things come up that try to trigger you what you will find is the lord will in fact be that be there for you i know for me mm-hmm. like when um traumatic situations came back that triggered mm-hmm. and started to like bring me back to the place i once was as a kid mm-hmm. the lord before that happened the lord told me to go to therapy and because mm-hmm. the lord told me to go to therapy i was able to overcome that situation triumphantly so just know when you rest at the feet of god, of god he will give you the guidelines to make sure that the waters may come back but they will never drown you right mm-hmm. or the pain may come but they will, it will never overcome you so you just have to Pick up the cross, pick up the cross because there are people waiting on your testimony. There are people waiting for you to overcome this situation. There are people waiting for you to cross this Jordan. And when you cross the Jordan, you will see why you had to go through it. Now I'm able to see why I was, why, um, I, why I had to go through what I went through because if I didn't, I would not be who I am today, right? Oh if I didn't, the Lord would not have given me this voice for a long time. I was like, God, I just feel like I can't do this, da, da, da. But now because I've seen so much in the body of Christ, I have a passion for the body of Christ, right? So we just have to embrace that and really rest in it. Rest in God, rest in God. I I want you to stick stick around longer because, (laughs) ooh, ooh, sis, ooh, this is good stuff, I tell you. This is is good stuff. This is salvation stuff, Yes. Yes, I tell you, this is good. Thank you, thank That's you. That's really so salvation. Much. I mean, honestly, pick up your cross. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pick up the cross. Like, pick up the cross and really follow God. Like, and not saying it may not get heavy, but the good thing about it is, when it gets heavy, you have people who can help carry the cross for you, right? So even mm. Jesus did not carry his cross by himself. Um, mm. So you have people who are there to carry the cross for you as it gets heavy, because as time go on, the Lord surrounds you with people. Because I even look at my life. I know for for a long time. I struggled acceptance and that's why, you know, I even went to a sorority and things of that sort. However, Mm -hmm. one thing I can say is the Lord literally put people around me supernaturally. And Mm -hmm. I was like, I like when I think about the fact that like God around me with these people, I'm like, I don't know what I did to deserve it. But God, when you're positioned in God, you will find that you have everything you need right you have everything you need right god god gives you people who can push you to become your best self in him without you having to compromise for it because a lot of times we try to compromise for the things that we think we need um because Mm -hmm. we're trying to we're trying to find our own way out but if you just pick up your cross and lay it at the feet of the lord you realize that there's an exchange and the exchange is a beautiful exchange and the the, um the lord of god is indeed light isn't it light like yeah like and you realize you have you don't have to carry it alone but you have the holy spirit as your helper and he brings the right people to walk with you through the journey i even can say like for me that the day when the lord even brought back um the day the lord brought back um me healing from um sexual abuse i remember it because again it was so much in the back of my mind that Mm. it was just not something i thought about for a long time and i remember it was a it was a night when my friends and i we had just finished praying and you know we're talking for a long time and i don't know how the conversation shifted but it shifted to this and all of a sudden i was like wait I started having all these memories and I remember like feeling so triggered and I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and go into a corner. And here comes my friend, you know, praying over me and like, you know, encouraging me to talk. And I was like, the Lord is so kind and so merciful that the Lord allowed this to happen when Mm -hmm. the right people were here, right. Who can walk me through this. So the Lord is just so kind that the Lord, the Lord will not leave you by yourself. Right. So just remember that pick up the cross and just really lay the God feet. And Yeah. Get the exchange. Oh my, God. my God, my God, this is good. This is good. I love that. 
I love that. Um, I know you've said a lot, but I want to ask you this third question. For sure. Right this is fun. Thank you. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm receiving everything you're saying right now. I, I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, what do you hope listeners, because tons of people are going to be watching this, um, what do you hope that they will take away from your testimony today? Yes, if you can take away one thing from my testimony, I just want you to take away that Jesus desires to also be your friend. So I want you to really develop your relationship with the Lord. Um, a lot of times, one thing we also tend to do is we tend to rely on secondhand revelation, but secondhand revelations cannot sustain you, right? You have to know the Lord for you. Who do you know God to be? So I really just hope and pray that you guys just really know God. And if you think you know God, get to know him deeper. Ooh, 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 I love that. I think that's, that's one of the key, you know, thing to every Christian walk is to have that one-on-one yeah. relationship, relationship to God. That, yes. that there's, no, there's nothing like it. Nothing. You know, and nothing like it. it's mm-hmm. important because that's what really helps to form your history with God. Like I said, I went through a huge faith test in 2022 and literally during the faith test, um, I showed my friend a video recently because I recorded it because one thing I was so sure of was I was like, God, I know you can come through for me because I've seen you do it before. Mm. I've seen you come through for me. So there were times when I was crying, but I'm like, God, I trust you. Right. And I was like, God, this sucks, but increase my faith. Like, God, even if you don't do it, I'm still going to love you. But I was able to come to that place. And literally, if you had asked me back in 2010 or whatever, if I could ever get to that place, it would have always been a no. But I was able to get to that place because i've i have history with god <laughs> like i have yeah. i have monuments with god right like there was and it, it's funny because you read the bible and in the bible you see like in the old testament they will say like okay the lord appeared to this person here and they built an altar you built an right. altar place where you've encountered the lord so now what you realize you have multiple altars built, you have multiple monuments that you can go to and like get hard so i was able to say god i know you're going to come through like, and guess what? God came through because I knew he would, but I have history with God. Like it yeah. took like 10 months, but God came through and I knew he would come through. Cause I was like, God, I have never seen you fail before. You are not about to start with me. And I was able That's to stand true. in that revelation, but it was the revelation I knew of God. And it was the history I have built with God. So knowing God, having your history with God, cause when hard time come and when you, when, um, when things happen, you're able to lean on that history. You're able to lean on that history and not anybody else's history with God. That's right. Oh, minister, minister. Oh, this is good. This is good. That's, that's one thing that no one can, can take away from you is, you know, that personal experience that you have with God, that you have with Jesus, because you know, Lord, you came through before. You will do it again you if, have you, to. if you've done it. You will do it again. Yeah, and even I if you that. don't do it, and even if you, you don't do it, that's, that's right. it. That's the part. Do that is the Let part. Let your will be done. Yes. Let your will be done. Yeah, that Ooh. is the part. Like when you have history with God, it's like God. I believe you will do this, but even if you don't, I'm still going to love you regardless. And I remember I had recorded a video that day, and I was like, and I, I, I had to really think about. It. I was like, God. I really do think you're going to come through for me, but God, allow me to see that eternity so much bigger than this, right? And the Bible says there's plenty of eternity in the hearts of men. Like there is so much eternity. Eternity is so much bigger than what I'm asking you for. And what is life eternal? The Bible says life eternal is that we may know the Lord and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. So even knowing you is bigger than what I'm asking you for. So God, even if all I receive right now is a revelation of more of more revelation of who you are, that's enough for me. Even if what I receive right now is just seeing you as a comforter, even if what I receive right now is just seeing you more as as um somebody who's closer to me in the fire, that's enough for me. And God help me to rest in that. But you're yeah. able to get to that point where you have history with the Lord. Like even yeah. if you don't do it, like even if you don't do it, I know for a fact there's something supernatural that's gonna come out of it, right? And sometimes what's supernatural is just the knowledge of God. The eternity is depends in the heart of man. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Minister, Minister Shinani. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, I, I still have time. We have time. <laughs> we have time. I feel like, you know, this is like a ministration 
portion now because, you know, like I said, we are led by the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and we let the spirit of the Lord, you know, just take over and, and have his own way because the thing that you're sharing right now, it's, 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 we're talking about the revelation. I feel like, you know, life without revelation, what is it? You know, we got to receive the revelation of God. That's what we need. I was talking to my husband the other day and, you know, we were talking about how the Bible, my husband said, well, the Bible is a book of, of guidelines. And, and I said, well, it's a book of guidelines. If you, you read it just like a book, Mm. but if you pray and you ask God to give you revelation, yeah, you know, that revelation for that specific season, for that specific time that you're reading the Bible. You know, and, and we get different revelations because I know, you know, you mentioned that we need the revelation of God, like this life, we, we need what God wants us to do now. Yeah. You know, what does he want you to do now? You know, and th- that may be different from 10 years ago. You know, what God is asked of you is asking of you today may not yeah. be what he's asking of you 10 years later. Yeah, for sure. So, but, um, oh. Minister Shinani. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to let you go. That's, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's very powerful. Really, um, hey. really moving with God. That's good. That's really good. Mm. That's, that's good. Good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say this. I know this is kind of long, but I think one thing mm-hmm. that also I've been remembering is even when you look at the children of Israel, the Bible says um, they were mm. led by cloud by day and the fire by night. And they mm. moved as the cloud moved, right? So there were times Ooh. when you think you settled somewhere and the cloud moved and you realize you have to move. And I think a lot of times we have to remember our relationship with God is literally following the cloud. We don't know mm. what the Lord will lead us to next. We just have to follow right. the cloud, right? So the cloud, the, the cloud, I believe, represents the presence of the Lord. So as the Lord is leading us, the Bible says, the Bible talks about you hear a voice behind you telling this is the way. Walk therein and you will never depart from that way, which means I don't even know where I'm going sometimes, right? But we have mm. to really trust, and which is why we have to know the Lord. Because unless right. we know the Lord, we will never know his voice. And even That's if we true. know his voice, unless we know the Lord, we will never trust his voice. So we have to really trust the, vo- the voice of God and realize that the revelation of God that you think you know now, it's ever so evolving because there's a place the Lord wants to lead you to that you have never been, right? Like we move from glory to glory. So there's a yeah. place, there's, there, there's another, there's yet another place that God is leading us to. And you have to just trust him to lead you there. So mm. it's it's a powerful Ooh. thing that we just have to remember in our Christian walk. Like I yeah. have to continually remember remember that myself because of course life comes and it's like, okay, God, I know like, oh, that's not what I knew about you. But God is like, I'm trying to show you another side of me. But would, mm. would you be still enough to listen? Would you be still enough to, to see it? Or would you be stuck in the old revelation? Forget that the mm. former things, right? I am doing a new thing. <laughs> Forget the former right. things. I am doing a new thing. So we have to remember there's always a new thing. There's always a, there's always a new revelation of God to see. Amen. So we we, yeah. we literally cannot rely on yesterday's revelation. We cannot rely on taking that revelation. I remember my pastor once said something is so mm. powerful. And he said a lot of time people think backsliding is, you know, you going back to the world technically right you know you you know you going back to like you know, fornication or smoking or drinking however he mm. said backsliding is also just remaining stagnant right you know, for example of you know let's say you're in like in a school and all your classmates are getting promoted to the next class but you stay where you are right you realize all your classmates are five classes ahead but your backside, <laughs> like your backside essentially. So backside is also just remaining stagnant. So if you wow. are stagnant in your place with God, you might have to ask yourself, are you even, are you even in God, <laughs> right? Are wow. you even in God? Because one thing about God is there's always a movement with the Lord, right? Like God is always, God is always doing something new. So if you're not, if you're not moving with the Lord, then you might, you might not be in God at all. So Ooh, that's good. I never looked at it like that. Yeah. I never looked at it like that. This is good. Wow. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ah, Minister Shinani, <laughs> I, you know what? We can go on and on. Like, yeah. what? I mean, you, you just, you know, you, you have such a, a unique anointing over you. And, you know, I, I can feel it. Um, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
thank you no, for of having course. me. This has been this has been good. I've enjoyed it. I know. Yeah. I tell you, you gotta come back. Okay, <laughs> you mentioned a lot of things, a lot of elements. I was like, oh, this can be a subject over here. Yeah, <laughs> this has been fun. Thank you for having me. But this was amazing, amazing, um, spirit led, spirit driven. You know, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. you know, for, thank you. I'm so, I'm so tired. This, this has been good. This has been good. It's been amazing. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Well, do you have anything else that you want to share with, with our audience or anything else? I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. And, you know, we're here to support you, you know, you know, you know, keep us updated with future projects and, and things that you're working on. Cause I know you're, you're guys, she's a tremendous, and we'll have all that information, like where to get your books, because you have some amazing books out there on Amazon that people need to go and pick up. All right. So um, but keep us updated, you know, sure. um, on future projects. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I'm excited to meet you soon. <laughs> I know. You're coming to Chicago. I like, am. We got to meet up. So, yes, I'm excited yeah. to meet you in person. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's how God does things. Yeah. So, yes. But thank you. Um, thank you.